Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this video. I want to go over how I made 100% on Zoom. And I also want to recap uh, the S&P 500 trade I took today, a little bit of my reasoning behind it because it was an odd one. I also want to go over a couple plays that we took in the Discord room, what we could use to improve on, and some really good setups that we took advantage of. First trade I want to go over is on Zoom. And I did a little recap on my Instagram yesterday. I posted a picture um, exactly. I annotated my chart and wrote exactly what I was looking at. I will link my Instagram in the description below. It's definitely worth a follow. I post daily trading recaps and I post really good trading tips and tricks. Link for this will be in the description below. But on Zoom, we had a couple reasons why I was watching this. Now I added this to my permanent watch list about two weeks ago, just because of how well it's been working with supply and demand. It's been an absolute beast. And the way this thing moves, it just moves very crazy. And you get to catch really nice moves off of very good price imbalances. So the first reason why this was on my main watch list was we had a positive news catalyst. Now, a lot of people ask me where I get my news from. Personally, I do not look at news because news precedes or price precedes news, meaning a stock will be in a supply zone and they drop bad news or a stock will be in a demand zone and they'll drop good news. It's a big news is a big liquidity um, driver. So they usually the institutions, the smart money and the people building up positions usually will need liquidity. And that's why news drops and it drives price depending on the zone that it is in. Um, so I don't really look at news. If I do look at something and I see something really maybe gapping up in pre-market or gapping down in pre-market and it has heavy volume, then maybe I'll look at the news and, and you know, see what the deal is. Why is it gapping down? Why is it gapping up? And I have CNBC on my phone as well. Um, but they had a price upgrade. The price target was upgraded from a bunch of other um, investment banks and analysts. So that was the first reason the price target was raised. The second reason was the four hour chart looked ready to curl and test all time highs. So, but at the time of this, um, zoom looked like this. So the daily chart or the four hour chart was making higher lows was making higher highs. And it just looked very imminent to break out as the only thing we had stopping us was a 51971 resistance level. And we had a little supply zone from September 23rd. So not much room to the upside that was really going to block us and defend us from testing all time highs. So automatically I had a bullish bias in my head, especially that we had no major supply sell order imbalances um, close to the current price. That was the third reason or in the second reason. And the third reason was we had a very strong opening drive price opened at 509 came back down to 506 buyers stepped into the market and drove price all the way up to about 518 and a half. So about a 12 point rally to the upside on the first five minute candle with pretty decent volume, um, about 500,000 shares. Then the next candle, we hit resistance or missed it by about 20 cents. So I saw that hit resistance and I posted this in the intraday commentary tab, exactly what I was looking for. I said the four hour chart was ready to break out. We had resistance, little supply. Um, and then what happened, what I saw and what made me get my entry was we missed resistance and we pulled back about seven points, very violent and aggressively with not too much volume. What this tells me is that buyers were, you know, somewhat still present in the market, but sellers were pretty active up here at the highs. Price came down, tested VWAP, and we held and we basically balanced out. Hence why you see this balancing um, candle here on a five minute chart. So I use five minutes for my entries and exits. So I'm going to go to a one minute and show you exactly what I saw. I mean, um, exactly what my entry was. I don't use one minute charts for my trading. Just want to show you where I entered. So I pretty much bottom ticked this trade. I got in at 512. I said, um, I'm long here at 512 risking uh, a little below 509 smaller size higher risk because i was buying when the market was coming down seven points i was in the 530 calls at 410 held vwap um, and i got in long here now the next five minute or the next one minute candle was a very strong green candle to the upside now if you've seen my most recent trading my favorite trading strategy video it's almost like the hot dog method where the candle is sandwiched in between um, usually that method would tell you to buy above the break of the red candle, but I got in before this was even a thing before it even was forming. And just ironically, it formed that favorite trading strategy. 
Um, and I did, I bought down here and then this thing ripped. So that just added a much more confluence to my trade, especially that we had resistance around the 520 area. Now the stock started moving up and usually I sell about 75, my 75% 75 of my position pretty fast, um, just to protect myself. Um, because if the stock wants to start coming down, obviously IV is going to get crushed. The premiums are going to get crushed. And what I was up at one point, um, might not be the same if, if for a quick little pullback. So I got, took out 75% of my position here, and then I left a couple contracts open to run. Now at the time I did this, we had a high, we didn't break all time highs yet, but Zoom broke above the high at 526.40 and failed to continue higher. Volume was not very convincing to me. So what I did was I sold the rest of my position up here just because I didn't like how it was reacting to 528. And every time it broke high a day, we would get immediately rejected. Um, this is still bullish because we were technically basing up here near the highs uh, and this stock started to continue to rally, broke all time highs. I don't like buying breakouts. Um, so if you broke an all time high break and you were still in the trade and did not take any profit, you would have got dumped on. So, you know, buying all time highs is not my cup of tea. I don't like trading like that. I like buying pullbacks and I like buying speculating that demand is going to form. Uh, then this thing held VWAP, tested all time highs again. Uh, ripped above all time highs, came back down, tested it, and then ripped continuously for the rest of the day. Uh, and this was a very good trade on Zoom. Uh, my commentary was on point in the Discord room. Uh, it was a very high quality type of trade. It was higher risk, but higher quality because the, the um, stop loss was very small. And these were my order entries, my fills, and my exits, if you wanna go back and look at them. So overall, great trade. I made 100% on the trade, got in at 410, and my last fill was 830. Um, so very good trade and I know a lot of members made bank off of this trade and the next trade i want to go over is on the s p 500 and for all you that have been following me for a while my favorite thing to trade i trade spy options while charting the s p future uh, and this trade's a little different i did something a little different today i had to improvise a little bit um, because i had an overall bullish bias and we didn't hit my demand zone to get long at but there was a nice setup that i took with pretty low risk so just to put things in a little perspective, we had a three hour um, supply zone from two days ago and we had a 90 minute demand zone, which was the closest levels uh, that I was watching for today. I had an overall bullish bias because of yesterday, we bounced pretty nicely at the one hour demand zone. So I wanted the strength to continue today. I was okay for a pullback, but I wanted this 90 minute demand at three, four, seven, six to act as support and for us to bounce there if price discovered that area. Unfortunately, we were not. We opened above VWAP, came down into VWAP, bottom tested it. Actually, the lower, the bottom tick was actually at VWAP exactly. Uh, and then we started rallying. Now, what I saw on this rally, if I go to my time and sales window, obviously you're not gonna see it right now. Actually, let me pull up the 15 minute chart. Um, I have it over 40 lots traded and I have the bid and the ask. And what I saw was a very aggressive buyer. If I go to a five minute chart, a very, very aggressive buyer at the 3.4.9.4 uh, level right here at this strong move up. This is also an agreement because look at this volume bar at the push up right at this three hour supply zone, 30,000 lots traded. I saw an order for about 700, 800 lots. Uh, very aggressive at the ask um, at the 3.4.9.4 level. So very strong buyer bringing the market up. We came to three hour supply. Now, usually you short at supply and in strong uptrends, supply will act as mild pullbacks for you to get long into. I had no reason to short this. Even though we were at supply, there was zero reason to short this for a couple of reasons. Very strong volume, number one. Number two, we had a very aggressive buyer down here at the 3494 level. So automatically, if I shorted this 3497 level, my risk to reward would not be so good because obviously if price comes to the 3494 area, he's going to want to defend his position because if he does not defend his position and this level at 3494 does not become resist, uh, become support, he's going to be underwater and he's going to start panicking. So my risk to reward to the short side was not good. I did not want to take this trade short, especially if this was not a favorable three hour zone. We had a one hour zone at 3511, which what I was really interested in. Um, so I knew we had a little more room to the upside if we wanted to come up. Wasn't convinced with the supply. We had very eager buyers. And then what I did was I took this long at the pullback at the 394 once it became support. 
You want strong buy or sell orders to become support or resistance. You want that trader to defend his position so he is not going to be underwater if the stock moves out of his favor. Um, I don't want to show you the next candle yet. So I put this in the intraday commentary tab. Again, if it's a high quality trade, I will let everybody know when I enter or not. It has to be high quality because I could take 100 trades in a day and if you all follow along and get in late or um, late or early, then your risk to reward is going to be skewed and I don't want you all taking trades that are going to be skewed. So I said I'm looking along here at the 3494 area at this pullback, which is exactly where we did. My stop was below 3489 and I was targeting 3511, which was one hour supply. Ironically, the next candle after I was in the trade, I saw a price coming up and I got in at 3496 once we started moving up a little bit. So my risk was 3496, stop loss around the 349, 3490, 3489 area. So I was risking about eight, eight to six points. Uh, and my potential reward uh, was, you could call it 16 points to the upside. Uh, so not bad risk to reward, uh, but it's a much more higher quality type of trade. So I saw that and price started ripping, had no reason to sell, had no reason to sell, no reason to sell, holding on to the position. Um, and then we finally got to this area and we had a bullish basin candle. Again, for all of you that have been following me, you know how much I love when the market is balanced out because you have an agreement between buyers and sellers. Um, so once price started stalling out here and we got this little period right here, which looks very similar to this period right here, I started getting a little worried and I put my stop loss if we came below this low um, with no strong, you know, convincing move to the upside with strong buyers. If you think about it, you know, this buyer here that bought 700, 800 lots, I think it was like 780. Um, if he gets a 20, you know, 15, 16 point rally to the upside on seven, 800 lots, that's a couple million dollars right there you're talking. So, you know, he's going to be happy with, with his position. I'm sure he's not hoping for, you know, a skyrocket move to the upside. Uh, so once I saw this candle go below the 3505, I scaled out 75%. I kept a couple contracts open uh, just if they wanted to run. And then this thing started coming down and then we started relief bouncing a little bit, but that's why I scale out. Scaling out is very important because you could protect yourself if the stock wants to reverse. And it's also good on the winning side if you want to hold a couple contracts to remain if the stock wants to continue running to the upside. Uh, so once we started continuing selling off, I was happy with my profits. Um, and I think my average allocation was 3503. Oh, three. I scaled out a couple times. Uh, so I made about seven points on this trade. Pretty decent, but I just wanted you to all to get my logic behind it and why I took this trade long, even though we reject supply. So I hope this video helped. I hope it wasn't too much of me rambling on about my trades. Uh, I hope you could learn something from it. If you do, drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and also follow me on Instagram. Thanks.